In this video, we're gonna take a look back at everything that we did to build the walls of our off-grid tiny house. In 2013, we decided to try and build our very own tiny house after being inspired by the documentary, appropriately named Tiny. We chose to build the house off-grid because we envisioned having somewhere to get away to, somewhere that was far away from the noise and the chaos of modern life. With limited build experience and knowledge of construction methods, we forged ahead by acquiring six acres of mountain land in North Carolina, completing the plans for the tiny house, and picking up the trailer that we would ultimately build the house on. We were both working full-time jobs in addition to our new parenting responsibilities, so it was a real challenge to figure out how we would fit in the time to work on the house. But we didn't let that deter us. Each day I would come home from work, kiss the family, put on the tool belt, and get right to work. It was exciting to think that there was a chance that we could have our very own self-built off-grid tiny home on the other side of all of this, but I also remember there being a real sense of dread as to whether or not it would all work out or if the house would make it safely to our property in the mountains over 500 miles away. With all those feelings at play, we got to work by cutting metal roofing panels to protect the underside of the house, framing the subfloor in three sections, installing rigid foam insulation and attaching all of it to the trailer using around 70 galvanized bolts. We were mindful to countersink each bolt so that the subfloor plywood would have a nice smooth surface to go on. Even in this very early stage, the excitement was really high. In the drier fall months, we recruited the help of family and friends to raise the sections of wall framing that I had stacked up in our garage. We made sure to place our shower surround on the subfloor prior to raising the walls up because there's just no way that the shower surround would fit through the front door once all the walls were up. We also used temporary bracing to support the first wall section so that we could add more sections until it could support itself. Looking back, this was an incredible day. The house really started to feel real, but then I made a horrible realization. The whole thing was too tall. tall. The house was designed to be 24 feet long, eight and a half feet wide, and 13 and a half feet from the ground to the top of the roof. But once the walls were up, I checked the total height and determined that once the roof was on, it would have exceeded the Department of Transportation limits and therefore not be road legal. If I had simply just double checked the true height of the trailer instead of just basing it off of the work order, I totally could have avoided this. In all honesty, I was kind of freaking out. I was devastated but I had already come too far to quit now. So I started tinkering around in the SketchUp model and lo and behold, I figured it out. I determined that if I just notched the roof rafters a little bit more, I could essentially sink the roof down into the house. My only hope was that once the house was completed, the total weight of everything would push the trailer down even more and ensure that I was within the legal limits. So with renewed confidence in solving a significant problem, we continued with the build. And after solving yet another problem, being that the walls were totally out of square with each other, by pulling everything together using ratchet straps, we started to sheathe the walls. We chose to sheathe the walls with zip panels and tape instead of using traditional house wrap to make things a bit easier. We installed ties to the corner framing of the house and the roof rafters to ensure the house was adequately attached to the trailer. We nailed all of the plywood in place, we cut rough openings for the windows using a pilot bit and a router, and installed the loft framing supports after staining them first. Seeing it all start to come together really was an amazing feeling. Building your own tiny house is a major commitment in terms of time and money, and it's really easy to be filled with self-doubt throughout the entire process, especially if you're new to something like this. Nevertheless, it was all starting to take shape, and having persevered through major setbacks gave us the confidence that we needed to keep the build going. We'll cover those steps in our next video, documenting our experience adding the windows, the door, siding, and the roof. See you then, and thanks for liking and subscribing.